So Joe Biden, his press secretary, and her rage at the press because has the president been treated for Parkinson's disease? You want to see somebody melt down and panic? You want to see somebody yell at the press? This is from the Biden-Harris administration. All-star stellar performance from the White House press secretary. But hey, get, t tell us why. Tell us why we shouldn't wor be worried about Biden being visited by a doctor. I cannot from here confirm any of that because we have to keep their privacy. I think they would appreciate that too. We have oh, to give them. The the doctor. We have to keep their privacy. It is public. It is public I, information. I, I, I it hear you. I have to I, I, guys, guys. The public needs to know, but she's like, guys, guys, guys. Just because Biden dropped trow and took a dump in his pants doesn't mean we have to worry about anything. No, Parkinson's disease is a very serious disease. Guys, guys, hold question. on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth and well, be in this aggressive way. We missed around here about how information's been shared with the press corps around here. What do you missed about? Oh, what do you miss everything about? he just asked about? And what do you and then every time I come back and I answer the question and that you, you guys asked correctly, you didn't have to come back and clean. I up never answered answer the question incorrectly. That is not true. I was asked about a medical exam. I was asked about a physical. That was in the line of question that I answered. And I said, no, he did not have a medical exam. And I still stand that by that. Matter of fact, the president still stands by that. How many times has the press secretary lied to us? Anyone still keeping count? By the way, according to the Google research right here. I'm pulling this up here. Parkinson's. What is Parkinson's disease? What is it? And it's and, and, and it's a very uh, sad, sad, sad system. All right. Um, but it's a disorder. Uh, it's, it's a disorder of central nervous system that affects movement, often including tremors. Um, and the thing is, the symptoms start slowly. They're barely noticeable. But then they start to show, just like Biden. Listen, folks, he's at that age. It happens to all of us. But the president, his administration, want us to pretend that that's not the case. And yet here you have an administration openly lying to the press. I mean, shout out to the press corps. They're actually holding their feet to the fire, as they should. He had a verbal check-in. That is something that the president has a couple times a week. A couple times a week. Now in regards to Dr. Kevin Kennard. And I am telling you right now that I am not sharing confirming names from here. It is a security reason. I am not going to do that, Ed. It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me. I'm not going to confirm a name. It doesn't matter if it's even in the log. I am not going to do that from here. That is not something I am going to do. What I can share with you is that the president has seen a neurologist for his physical. You know something, Black Zen? That is a brutal comment. Black faces in fascist places. <laughs> hey! Everybody can be a fascist. White people, black people, Latinos, Asians. Come on in, folks. Let's all do it. <laughs> Three times. Three times. And it is in the reporting that we share a comprehensive reporting. Matter of, matter of fact, it's more than what the last guy shared. And it is in line with what George, George W. Bush did. It's in line with what Obama did. And so it is comprehensive. It is out there. I just read a quote from it, but I am not, I am not going to devolve somebody's name and, or confirm someone. I'm not going to do that. That is as is privacy for that person. I'm not going to do that. It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me from here. I'm just not going to do that. It is inappropriate and it's not acceptable. So I'm not going to do it. Not about the name. Go ahead. If you no, cannot okay. confirm the name, can yeah. you confirm whether or not the president has seen this Parkinson specialist? Um, and you mentioned yeah. three times that the visitor logs show a duration of eight visits over eight months. I think that is the crux of the question. But I, but I also said, I also said there are thousands of military personnel that come to the White House, and they are under the care of the medical unit. They are. So can you confirm that the Parkinson's I, visits, specialist visits were for the president? I, or not? What I can tell you is that the president has seen a neurologist three times. And I read. There is no war in Bossing, say. By the way, 
I, I actually have a letter from the uh, White House. I'll be more than happy to read just a few lines from it about why a Parkinson's the disease doctor uh, was in the White House. I mean, why would one show up unless what? He had an exclusive meeting with the president and they talked or unless he's trying to take care of Biden. Oh, Democrats, you're panic. A lot of you liberals panicking right now. I mean, some of you are putting on a brave face of hopium copium, but some of you are showing your fear and like a vampire. I'm just feasting. I could smell your fear and it's so intoxicating. It's it's glorious. And of course, I get a lot of messages from people. Gee, Kit, your rads are a little bit too happy about this. Aren't you afraid of Twump? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I, I, I'm, I'm being an unsufferable prick because I remember 2016 and 2020. It took a while for us to have our moment of revenge. And I'm enjoying it. Now, when you send me text messages, Democrats, about donating money to your party and to Biden, I will reply, beg me harder. Beg me harder. Show me. Show me you want this money. What? What? what sh show me to all you liberals calling me a bully and, uh, you know, saying I'm a bad person. I live rent free in your head. And to quote Dr. Nick, that's the best kind of rent there is. I'm living rent free in your head, and so is all of my audience. To you, what the neurologist has said, and I read to you the last the last line. I could say it again: uh, no findings which would be consistent with any cerebellar or other central neurolog neurological disorders, such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or ascending lateral sclerosis. That is from that is from February. That is coming from February. That is what the medical unit, the, the president's doctor shared. And I shared, I said to you, it's happened three times. Each time there is a physical that occurs and we put out a comprehensive report. That is when he has been able uh, to see uh, to see a specialist. So that's what I can share. Question on, on this. Um, has the president, you mentioned Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, all of these things. Um, one diagnosis that we have heard of potential diagnosis is hydrocephalus, which is fluid buildup in the brain. It's something we've never heard in any of the medical reports. Is that something that the president has if it's, been about? Um, if, it's, if it's not in the medical report, obviously it's not it, It's not something that the president uh, is dealing with. Uh, if, it, oh, well, I can tell you this, I, just going back to Parkinson's for a little bit, so to give you some answers here, has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication? For Parkinson's, no. So those are the things that I can give you full blown answers on, but I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna confirm a specialist, a, any specialist that comes to come to comes to the White House out of privacy. Absolutely pathetic. Here, you know what? Let's 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 rip this bandaid off. Let's rip this bandaid off right here for all of us to see. Um, gee, I don't think I'll be able to pull it up here entirely, but let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in us a little bit more. All right. Well, I won't be able to read all of that, but here we go. All right. I wanted to share with you. This is from the White House, by the way. Okay. I wanted to share with you. Uh, background on why Dr. Kevin Kennard uh, visited the White House to protect patient privacy for the thousands of patients of the White House medical unit and the physicians who treat them. Normally, we do not disclose the names of the specials we work with. However, in the interest of accuracy, we obtained permission from the president and Dr. Kennard to confirm the details I am sharing. Dr. Kennard has been a, again, this is all just gabbledygook, goop, just talking, is a neurology consultant to the White House Medical Unit since 2012. Oh, my goodness. He was around since Obama. Uh, he was chosen for his uh, breadth of experience and expertise across the specialty of neurology. Prior to his uh, movement disorders uh, fellowship at Emory University, uh, he had practiced as a general neurologist for six years. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, he is the longest serving neurologist at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Oh, wow. Okay. And in the military health care system. He's giving us his background, okay? So we're talking about what he's done. All right, that's what the whole paragraph is right there for. So just skim me through it. As I've written in each of the president's medical reports as part of the president's annual physical, he sees a team of specialists that have included optometry, dentistry, uh, osteoporotics, um, uh, foot and ankle, 
osteoporotic uh, spine, you know, physical therapy, neurology, sleep medicine, because he's not because he has a sleep apnea, you know, because he has to have a CPAP machine, cardiology, radiology and dermatology. Dr. Kennard was a neurology specialist that examined the president Biden for each of his annual physicals. His findings have been made public each time I have released results of the president's annual phys uh, physical. President Biden has not seen a neurologist outside of this annual physical. Uh, the results of this year's exam were detailed in my February 28th letter. He goes on to talk about this. All what this is, is please ignore the man behind the curtain. Ignore the man behind the curtain. But let's go. But you know, things are bad. You know, things are failing. You know, things are terrible. When you start losing the press. Hey, Jake Tapper, this was a perfect way to freeze frame him. But CNN Jake Tapper reads an actual Biden quote from the transcript of his recent interviews on Morning Joe. Listen, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, the fact that his body's falling apart. Biden, Biden, vote blue. You're not inspiring anything. And to the White House press secretary, keep on yelling at the press. It's pure gold for me because I love seeing you guys panic. In reality, 72% of voters say that they believe President Biden is too old. That's according to CNN's most recent polling. Voters have been saying this for quite a long time. The reality is that the Democratic elites are mostly late to acknowledge these age. And oh, no, no, no. Everybody knew. And the Democratic elites knew, but they didn't think it would be this bad. What's wrong with Grandpa Joe? Ability issues compared to the rest of the public. The elites have been forced to reckon with it after the debate just 11 days ago. Look at my career. I've not had many of those nights. It was a terrible night, and I, I, I really regret it happened. But the fact of the matter is, how, how can you assure you're going to be on, on you know, faith that can intervene on your way to go to, you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea that I'm too old. The fact of the matter is, how can you assure you're going to be out on, you know, on your way to go, you know, work tomorrow, age, age wasn't, you know, the idea that I'm too old. Keep in mind, that soundbite is supposed to be reassuring to the. Jake, it's too late for CNN to look smart. It's too late. You guys knew this and you never did your job. It's, it's, you finally caught up, you know? It's like I'm up on top of the hill myself, Daniel, INN, RBN, do dissidents, all of you. We're all on top of that hill. And here comes Jake Tapper saying, guys, 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 all corporate media, guess what? There's something wrong with Joe. And as we're all eating our delicious food, we could be looking like and, and pretend to be shocked. <gasps> you don't say. Really? You don't say. Come on, corporate media. Don't be stupid with me. Stop it. Those Democratic supporters who have gone wobbly. Many Democratic officials with whom I've spoken are worried that President Biden and his family and his inner circle appear to be in complete denial, not just about whatever might be wrong with him, but the state of his candidacy right now. And so this leads to something that's very interesting. I'll end it on this note here. I'm at an article from RT, just a trigger to libs, but the Democrat paymasters are now discussing the elegant pullout. No pun intended. An elegant pullout of Biden's being withdrawn from the nomination process for the DNC convention here in Chicago. <clears throat> so let's talk about it. Major donors to the U.S. Democratic Party are discussing ways how President Joe Biden could drop out pull out what don't make a mess of the 2024 race without hurting the party's chances of beating Donald Trump in November. The New York Times reported on Monday, Democrats and their supporters have been increasingly doubting Biden's electability after his disastrous performance during the televised debate with Trump last month. Multiple reports said that the Democrats, the Democrats and some of Biden's own aides were shocked by the 81 year old's behavior on the stage. I'm just surprised Biden didn't crap his pants and have big concerns over his mental and physical fitness to serve as president for a second term. Some donors have discussed elegant ways, oh, elegant, ways for Biden to step aside to preserve his reputation, while others believe that dropping out sooner is better. 
Some executives told DealBook that it would be a mistake for Biden to quit the race without becoming the nominee first. They argued that doing so would rob him of the power to anoint his replacement. Oh, my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. Democrats will meet in Chicago in late August. Hey, that's my hometown. Good to see them all there to officially name their candidate for the 2024 election. According to the report, an open convention where delegates are not bound in, on, to any particular candidate could create an inter-party strife that helped Donald Trump to win. Dealbook cited sources as saying that prominent financiers and investors, including Larry Fink of BlackRock, wow, John Gray of Blackstone, and Peter Ozard of Lazard, and Robert Wolf, a former U.S. executive close to Barack Obama, are discussing whether to stick with Biden. The 46th president, however, refused to quit the race, albeit admitting that he does not debate as well as he used to. Speaking to BSDNC on Monday, Biden said that he is not going anywhere, describing himself as the best candidate to beat Trump. To which I have to say, Democrats, I leave you with this. Enjoy your shite. Oof. 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 Oof.